Hello everyone, my name is Harris Wasilko from Mosse Cybersecurity Institute and today we're going to go through our lab setup deploy a virtual machine in VirtualBox exercise and we're going to go through a full walkthrough of this exercise from start to finish, everything you need to download, install, configure to get yourself up and running with some virtual machines to uh, go and solve other practical exercises in MCSI's online learning platform. Now, as this is a, a walkthrough, um, we're gonna go through everything and it's gonna be a nice slow pace and you'll be able to follow along and you know, if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment on our, on this, uh, the, in the comments on this YouTube video or jump into the MCSI online forums and ask us a question there. Um, but we're gonna go through everything to make this nice and simple for someone who's never done this before and let's hope that everything goes correctly but in the world of IT and cybersecurity, maybe something that uh, you've done, even if you've done it before, the one time you wanna show it to someone or something, it may not work, um, but we'll see what, how, how everything goes. Now, the next thing that we, which we need to do is to get started with this exercise. Now, we'll go over a bit of a background to this exercise first. So, what is a virtual machine? So, a virtual machine is an emulation of a computer system. Virtual machines provide a safe, efficient, and cost-effective testing environment. Many exercises in the platform are to be completed on virtual machines. Now, what is this exercise? So, we need you to install VirtualBox and create VMs for Kali Linux and Windows. Then you'll create a NAT network using the host network manager. Now, what, what are the learning objectives? So using virtual machines is a skill that all IT professionals should have because you can perform unsafe tasks in a virtual environment without causing any damage to anything. So completing this exercise will teach you how to use VirtualBox and create virtual machines for numerous operating systems. Some examples are as a blue teamer, you will use virtual machines to analyze malware samples and attacks, or as an offensive security consultant, you will learn to use virtual machine, oh sorry, you will need to use virtual machines to test attacks and find vulnerabilities in software. Now, this is something I remember the first time I used VirtualBox to install a virtual machine. I had a hard time with it. It was quite challenging. I'd never done it before, but it was a skill that once I did it, it's actually, once you do it, it's actually really easy to do and you can just go and do it every single other time. You need a virtual machine throughout your entire career. Now, the specifications for this exercise, and we're gonna complete each one as part of the walkthrough. We're gonna to need to download and install VirtualBox, download and install the Kali Linux OVA file, set up a Windows virtual machine, configure the VMs to use the NAT network setting, and we're gonna to need to demonstrate that we can pin between the Kali VM and the Windows VM. Now, let's uh, go back. And there's some frequently asked questions for this exercise from MCSI students, so I thought I'd cover them. What are, what's the most common reason why students fail this exercise? Well, a lot of students tried to pin the local host 127.0.0.1 instead of a target virtual machine. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing this when you're learning and it's your first time doing this. Uh, if you do submit the exercise and you've done this, we'll let you know that's what the MCSI, MCSI instructors are here for and that's why we manually review the exercises to help let you know that, okay, maybe this isn't correct, but this is how you do it as you're learning these challenging new practical skills. Now, what, what do we need to show the entire virtual machine setup? No, your video solution or submission only needs to be three minutes maximum in duration. We only need to see virtual machines installed and that they can pin one another. Now, that means we only need to see this specification here in the screen recording. So you can do all of this by yourself and we only need to see this. So if your video does go a bit over three minutes, like if it's three and a half minutes, maybe even four minutes for, and this applies for all of the exercises, that's fine. You're not gonna fail an exercise because your video is slightly too long. We really just wanna avoid someone, you know, 
recording themselves for the length of like a, a feature film for two and a half, three hours or a Netflix series for eight to 10 hours where they're going through every single specification for an exercise. Um, so we just need to see the solution working in action basically. What do I do if there's not enough disk space? Free up some disk space, I guess, is the simplest way to put it. Can I use an alternative to VirtualBox? Sure, no problems. We just recommend VirtualBox for someone who's, you know, this might be the first time you're ev you ever have to do this. Uh, and we just recommend VirtualBox so as a, s a software to use. Uh, if you want to use VMware, which is another software which is pretty popular, um, you're welcome to do that. And if you're stuck on this exercise, what should you do? Well, one, you can go to the MCSI's online forums. Actually, up here, if you go ask questions, uh, that will direct you to the forums. Also, um, you can go to our Mike's Introduction to Cybersecurity Curriculum from, on the dashboard that will be displayed for you. And that has practical exercises which can be completed in a web browser, so you don't need VMs. Um, but you can uh, start learning some troubleshooting and some basic IT skills and maybe come back to this exercise in a few days or weeks uh, once you're a bit more confident with some hands-on practical skills. Um, but otherwise, we've got this walkthrough which I'm recording right now which uh, we're early in but hopefully the rest of it will grow, go great and we'll be able to, um, you'll be able to follow along and uh, get this exercise completed and you'll be ready for some more practical exercises. Now, let's just get started. That's the next best thing to do. So what do we need to do? We've got download and install VirtualBox as the first specification here. So we'll go to the references here and uh, we've got a VirtualBox download link here. So let's click on that. And if you're ever doing an exercise, uh, there's always gonna be some references, but if you do need to find something which maybe isn't, isn't in the references, the best thing you can do is just Google search whatever question you have and um, as simple as it sounds, uh, it'll find what you're looking for, hopefully. Now, I've got a Windows machine, so let's go Windows hosts and this will start to download. While that's downloading, let's be proactive and look at what else do I need to download. So I need to download the Kali Linux OVA file. Do we have a reference for that? Yes, we do. Let's click on that. Cool. Now, I want to choose this one here, Virtual Machines. And you can see here there's 32-bit, 64-bit. I've got a 64-bit machine. And we're using VirtualBox. So I want to download the VirtualBox file here. So I'll click on just the direct download link here. It'll start to download, but because the file is quite large, I downloaded this ahead of time uh, just to save a bit of time in the video. So we're not just uh, sitting here for an hour or two watching the download increase by 1% uh, every few minutes. And also you'll see here a download for VMware. This is another type of software where if you want to use VM, you will just download uh, this file directly here. Now let's go back and let's see what else do I need to download. I'll need to download, uh, that's it for now. Let's we'll just go with the first two specifications. Great. Now we want to actually install VirtualBox. So let's just open it up from here. Opening, 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 great. Next, next, and we'll keep all of these ticked. Next, proceed with installation. Yes, install, yes. And it's installing, awesome. Now the status is going nearly green, progressing, progressing, great. And let's start it, and uh, now that it's, it's finished. And let's uh, hope that it loads. There we go, awesome. Now this is VirtualBox. So once you've installed VMs, they'll be listed here on the side, and in this window here, you'll see the settings for them. Um, and we'll, we'll do that now, let's install a VM. So let's go back here, and we can tick this specification off. That now we've, we've now, downloaded and installed VirtualBox. So next we need to uh, install the Kali Linux OVA file we downloaded. So let's go to my downloads folder and uh, we've got the OVA file here. So for an OVA file like this for Kali Linux, let's just double click on it. And it will load off these settings and awesome, everything looks cool. And let's just click import and let's agree to this. 
and it's going to start uh, importing. Now, while that's going on, I want to go back to this and let's see if we can do something while we're waiting for that. So we need to also set up a Windows Virtual Machine. So what we can do is actually, we've got a Windows ISO download link here. So we need to download the ISO file, the disk image. Now, let's click on that link and it will take us to this website where we can download. It's got a download button here on the side if we just scroll a little bit down the page. And I want the 64-bit version for this. So I'm gonna click download. And awesome. It's gonna be downloading, wait a moment, file download will begin shortly. And cool, it's starting to download. However, let's click cancel because I've already downloaded this ahead of time just because it's such a, it's a large file and I don't wanna keep you just uh, watching the downloads percentage go up. But what you'll see here in my downloads folder is we've got the Kali Linux as an OVA file and the Windows 7 has downloaded as a, it's got a disk image or an ISO file. So the, the way these are installed into VirtualBox is slightly different. Uh, as you saw in the Kali Linux, I just double clicked on it and it opened up the settings straight away and I just had to click import. And now um, you can see it's still importing, but the ISO will be installed slightly different, but it's pretty simple. Once we do it in this walkthrough the first time, you'll know how to do it every other time and um, it'll be pretty straightforward and we'll see that difference in a moment. But as you can see now, well, for some reason this is open twice. Um, great, Kali Linux has now installed as an OVA file. So let's actually turn it on. Dun, 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 dun. Double click. And if everything uh, goes as it should, it will start, yes. Loading, loading, loading. It's asking me for some things. No, no. Okay, so this is cool. So what I'll point out before we solve and troubleshoot this error, one thing I'll point out is because MCSI's online learning platform is 100% practical, uh, there's no pre-made lab environments, no like uh, answers, PDF slides, I'll say no walkthroughs for mo provided, even though this is a walkthrough, but you know, you're not really gonna find answers for most of the exercises. It's really as if you're in the field doing this like you would as a cybersecurity professional or an IT professional. So what that, that, does that mean? Sometimes things aren't gonna work because um, it's not in a pre-made environment where, you, and where things are done for you. So you're gonna have to troubleshoot things a lot. Now, that's what's just happened here in this, um, Walk through, you can see this, this has happened, uh, but it actually tells us the error here, which is great, because using this 100% practical approach to learning cybersecurity, you're gonna become awesome at researching, at critical thinking, at troubleshooting, and just at problem solving by facing so many, um, Oh, so many like countless little bugs, errors where you're gonna have to troubleshoot, you're gonna have to think through the problem uh, that you may not get if you're just, um, you know, watching walkthroughs which are, are done to be perfect or completing things in maybe like a pre-made lab environment uh, where it's gonna work every single time. Now, what we're gonna do is it's telling us that um, there's some error and we need to, to fix this problem, either install the extension pack or disable USB 2.0 support. So in the settings. So let's actually look through the settings. So I don't have to download anything. It gives us an or option. So let's just uh, disable USB 2.0 support. Okay. Now let's go into the settings. This is the settings for the, the Kali Linux VM, the settings icon here. And I want, it's a USB related one. Cool, so let's go, it was an issue with the USB 2.0. So let's just make it USB 1.1, okay. And let's start it again. And let's hope, awesome, there we go. It's uh, working, oops. Um, it's uh, turning on. 
Great, we're making progress, everyone. But it's installed, so what we'll do, while that's turning on, we'll go back to it in a moment. If we can tick off this specification now, great. We've downloaded and installed the Kali Linux OVA file successfully. Um, let's go back to it, and it's asking for us to use username and password. What is that? Well, I believe on this page where we downloaded it from, just up here, it has these images have the default credentials of a username of Kali and a password of Kali. So let's just go and uh, punch those in. Whoops, if I could type, I'm sure that would uh, make it a lot better. Great, now we are in, almost, now we're in. Cool, so that's it, done. Now I might just uh, power off this machine. Let's just um, shut it down for now. Cool, great. Now set up a Windows virtual machine. So we've downloaded this already. Uh, if you haven't, you can go back to the reference and download it again. Um, but what we wanna do here, I mentioned that it's a little bit different for the ISO file. So we don't wanna actually do this as a new, in virtual box if we open it up. We wanna click new up here. And let's just call it Windows 7 VM. Nice and straightforward. Next, let's just um, give it a memory. Let's, um, yeah, let's uh, keep it at that. Next, and what do you wanna do? So maybe you already have an existing hard disk. I don't know, in this case, we wanna create a virtual hard disk now. Create, and I like to choose, you can choose VDI or VD, VHD, I like to choose VHD myself personally, but that's kind of more just a, a personal preference. And let's go with, um, let's go with 24 gigabytes. Let me actually just check the PC space to make sure I've got that much space. Oh, I do, perfect. And let's do create, cool. So what this is doing is this is actually creating the uh, a VHD storage file and it's not installing Windows 7 yet. So once this is done in 39 seconds, we're gonna have to actually install the ISO and attach it as a disk uh, to this Windows 7 um, VHD file that we're creating. And it's it sounds a bit more complicated than it is, uh, probably just because the way I explained it made it sound a lot more complicated than what it is. Uh, but in 15 seconds time, you will see that, oh, you'll see what we, what we need to do for this exercise. So we're starting to make some progress. Two specifications down, we're on the third one right now. And then once that's done, we'll be uh, smooth sailing from there, cool. So what we wanna do here before we start it is, like I mentioned, we need to attach the if we go back to my downloads, we need to attach the disk file to actually install Windows 7. So what we're gonna do is settings, and we wanna go to storage, and you see here there's a little disk, but that's empty. So we wanna click on the little uh, button here, choose a disk file. Now, let's choose from my downloads, it shows here, perfect, and okay. And now, if we double click on it, it's going to open. Awesome. Now, we're gonna have to install this and uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. It's uh, Windows 7, so it's been, uh, been a while since I've seen a bit of a Windows 7 action, um, but we'll see, we'll go through the download process. Uh, so next, install now. This setup is starting, and I'll just continue to narrate through the setup process. And obviously, uh, if you, if you fall, maybe fall, be fall behind, I guess, like I'm, if the video, if I'm going a little bit too fast for you, uh, you can always uh, slow, pause the video, see what I'm doing on screen, start it again, or you can always, uh, in the playback options on YouTube, uh, slow down the speed. Um, so we're copying and installing Windows now. This um, no, shouldn't take too long, hopefully. But 
instead of just sitting here and watching it, uh, watching it go, maybe we'll try to do something else. What else can we do in this exercise? Okay, so there's something here. Configure the VMs to the NAT network setting. So there's a few different network settings in uh, VirtualBox. So if we go uh, work settings, I'm just going to show you what, all you need to know. So virtual networking. Let's just grab the virtual networking one because it's from the VirtualBox website. Um, and cool. So it has the different types of networks here. Uh, I'm not going to read through them all, but I just wanted to point it out. So if you do want to go and uh, read the differences between NAT, NAT network, bridge networking, internal networking, host only networking, generic work networking and the different options they are it is good to know um, if, if you want to know just you know do what I did go to Google uh, like I mentioned punch in what you need to know and it, it'll take you to the answers but in this case we're going to use a NAT network so NAT network is a type of internal network that allows outbound connections so let's uh, go back to VirtualBox uh, let's just check on this. Still going? Great. We've got some time to set up our NAT network. So configure the NAT network setting. So what we want to do is open VirtualBox. We want to go to File, and then we want to select Preferences. And we want to go to Network. Oh, there's already a NAT network here. Awesome. So all you would need to do otherwise, let's actually... Uh, Let's remove it just for the sake of this exercise. So what you see actually is here, nothing there on your screen. Um, and you wanna click add NAT, net, NAT network. It's a bit of a mouthful to say, and it will add it there, okay. But what we actually wanna do with that now is we need to, uh, each of our VMs will need to join the network. So we will do it with the Kali Linux VM first. Uh, let me just quickly check on the Windows, still installing. Cool, so settings and we want to go to network attached to NAT, but we need to change this to NAT network and it automatically find the NAT network name. And I just kept it at NAT network to um, just make it easier and click okay. And now we're joined. So you can see in the settings here, NAT network. So once the Windows 7 VM has installed, we'll change it over as well. And then we will be done once we do it for the windows machine with uh, one and two more specifications and then we're nearly there but let's go back here and let's go to um let's see check on the progress oh setup is starting services so we're making making some progress the installation is completing great so maybe what i'll do is while this is going, ooh, lots of a little, I'll just leave those. It uh, clearly doesn't like it if I uh, click on it, it'll just come back. Great. So, what do I want to do? Ooh, let's, uh, let's make this a little bit smaller and let's just uh, multitask a little bit because uh, we'll keep it going so it's a bit more of a walkthrough and there's no real editing involved just to make it more realistic. So, it might be. Uh, Better to follow along. Oh, great. It's actually making some progress. I was going to go and uh, read the different network settings and just um, actually, if we had some time, go over what the different network settings in VirtualBox are. But I guess um, you know, it's been a, been a while since I've used uh, Windows 7. So I guess if, it, if you want, let us know the last time you used Windows 7 in the comments of this video. It'd be interesting to see the last time everyone used it. So type in a username. For example, so let's go Harris. Next, type in the password. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, even though this is just a VM. Hint, it is a password. Unfortunately, the hint is required, so I had to put something in. Now, this, I've heard, I've seen in the MCSI forums before, a few people have got stuck on this screen. Type your Windows product key in. So uh, let's uh, untick this. So some Windows 7 ISOs you might find online 
uh, will make you have a product key. However, in this version, which uh, I've got you to download, that's why we've got the link for it, there is an option to skip the activation uh, at the install right now. So we actually click skip and let's just do, um, I don't know, ask me later. It's uh, just a VM, so it's not super important. Um, and let's just do, say it's a home network. It's installing. Um, but yeah, back to the uh, activation uh, code, which we get stuck. And so when you skip, press skip in this version, it will say, it'll have a little message usually that it's uh, maybe not activated and you'll have 30 days. And then after 30 days, it's still going to work. The message will, will just change. It'll have a little message on your computer here. Um, but just saying that it's, uh, it's not activated. But you can still continue to use it. That's fine. But look at that, now we've got Windows 7 installed. So I guess um, what I want to do is actually just um, shut it down. I know we just installed it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut it down straight away. Cool, because I want to tick off the specification and configure the VMs to use NAT network. So let's actually go back and do that. So let's go Windows VM and let's go, oh, we have got to click on the, the settings icon up here and then we'll go network, NAT, NAT network and okay, great. So now they're both on the NAT network. So in theory, let's uh, give this a try. Let's actually go back and tick off the specification again. So now we're here to demonstrate we can pin between the Kali VM with the Windows VM. Now this is the moment of truth. We will see, let's uh, launch both of them. Um, if you, depending on your computer, you may need to go into the settings and lower the base memory for each system. Uh, just be aware um, to make them run. One of them will pop up with an error. So all you need to do is just click on the settings, go into the system and just decrease this here. Um, but it looks like both of them are running this time, which is great. And if we remember the username and password was Kali and Kali, let's log in. Got my Windows 7 VM here and let's go. Awesome. Now I want to open up command prompt, IP config. Interesting. Now something has a uh, not happened what has not happened maybe let's go actually host network hmm file preferences network edit do we need to edit it we don't interesting dilemma there we go, actually, that works now. So we've got a, on the Windows machine, uh, make sure you select a, that you're on a public network. Um, here we go, so we wanna be on a public network here. Um, so I know before, I believe I said home network, actually let's make it public. So all you need to do um, is if you, you should get an IP address like this or something which is 10.0.2. Um, something which is in the same, which, is, which can connect to here. 
So we wanna go right click. If you're not getting an IP address like this, right click, open network sharing center. And we wanna do, click on public network here, but you, you might have home network or work network, change it to public network, but awesome. So now let's actually make these smaller. So they're side by side. Um, apologies for the little hiccup there. Oops, uh, something's happening with my, ooh, something's happening, there we go. Got them back. So now what we wanna do is pin from the this machine, so P-I-N-G, and we wanna pin this IP address. So let's go, oh, so let's go 10.0.2.15. Enter. The moment of truth. Ta-da! Four sent, four received, zero losses. Perfect. Now we can tick this off. Perfect. So what that means is we both of the machines are connected. Whoops, let's bring that back up. So this is actually important to get work and this is why we ask you to do this in this exercise. So for other exercises where maybe you want to use Metasploit to exploit vulnerabilities in a Windows machine. This is just an, a simple way to make sure that yes, the machines are connected. Um, and then so when you actually do try to exploit a vulnerability, at least you'll know they're connected and uh, you'll be able to uh, actually do that. Um, but awesome. So we have just completed this exercise. So now what do you do from here? So now all you need to do is complete a, open up your screen recorder and you just need to do a screen recording. You have your exercise title um, and your uh, student user ID and you just need to do a screen recording of just this part here. So just using the uh, pin 10.0.2.15 or whatever the IP address of your Kali Linux machine is and hit to enter and that's all we need to see. So it'll probably be a 30 second to one minute video submission in total for this exercise um, if I had to estimate it. But awesome, we did it. Uh, great work to you following along in the video. Congratulations on setting up your first small lab environment using virtual machines and I really Look forward to you submitting this exercise and uh, the MCSI instructors are looking forward to reviewing this exercise of yours. And then you're ready to tackle a lot of other exercises which require VMs to be used in, in, um, in our platform. And this is now a skill that you're gonna have where the next time you need to use, install a VM, you actually know exactly how to do it and you'll be able to immediately do it again uh, after following through this approach. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video and um, we're gonna do a, a, some more walkthroughs. So keep an eye out for those. And if you do have any feedback, feel free to let us know, but uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and uh, um, give us a like and um, submit the exercise. Thank you, bye-bye.